Hey everyone, Joe here. In today's video, I have another wireless mic to review and this is the Boya mic. So this is a wireless mic system that can be used with mirrorless cameras, iPhones, Android phones, tablets, and even computers. So this review is going to be a bit long, so if you want to save time, you can use the timestamps provided to jump to different sections of the video, or just read the text review that I have already written on my blog. The links are in the video description below. So before we start, disclaimer, this is actually a review unit provided by the company and in this video I'll just present to you my findings so that you can decide whether this is worth the money. And the price for this mic at the time of review is US $159. Shown on the side are the specifications for the Boya mic and there are many numbers that I cannot remember. Anyway, let me just give you the bottom line up front. I have been using this mic for a few weeks now and this mic is able to record clean and clear audio regardless of the device you use. There is noise cancelling and there is internal storage that can record backup audio up to 15 hours. Build quality for this product is solid and this is the transmitter which has a battery life of around 10 hours and you can get an additional 1.5 times battery life with the charging case so you can get an additional 15 hours with this and this is the clip with a really strong magnet so they can clip this to your shirt or behind your shirt and there is a 3.5 millimeter audio jack for you to connect this mic to a lavia if you want to use one. This is the receiver and it's quite compact just like the transmitter. There is a clip as well so that you can attach this to your mirrorless camera. And down here is this um, design that lets you attach the lightning or USB-C adapter so that you can use this with your Android phones, tablets, iPhones or iPads and this design is really smart. So if you're using this with your mirrorless camera you just have to attach the 3.5 millimeter cable from this receiver to your camera. There is a useful OLED display that you can use to check your settings and you can adjust your settings using the transmitter or receiver. And the downside for this display is, as you can see, it's not that bright. So it can be very difficult to see what's on the display when you are outdoors. This mic has many features and it's able to record clear audio quality, which obviously is the most important thing about a mic. Noise cancelling works well. Generally speaking, the functionality for this mic system it's really good so the only downside of this system for me is just the brightness of the display on the receiver which is not bright enough for use when you're outdoors so hopefully the company can increase the brightness for their future models and that would be great and now on to the full review let's have a look at the items included in the box so this is the packaging box and I have already removed the charging case from the box. So it says here that the mic comes with two years of warranty. That's the warranty card, quick start guide, and there is a drawstring pouch with additional accessories inside such as a 3.5mm to 3.5mm cable for connecting the receiver to your mirrorless camera two lavalier mics with the foam cushion and clip. This is 3.5 millimeter and this is quite long. This is a USB-C to USB-A charging cable, USB-C to USB-A adapter and two furry windshield. Let's look at the design of the charging case which you can see is quite big. This is how big the case is compared to my iPhone 15 Pro Max and it's kind of heavy as well. So the reason why this is big is because it holds two transmitters and this receiver and it also holds the adapter, the lightning adapter and the USB-C 
adapter as well. You can squeeze the furry windshield into the charging case as well. So that's the USB-C charging port and this charging case supports wireless charging. And in front here, there are four light indicators to tell you the battery life of the charging case as well as the charging activity when you have the transmitters and receiver inside. So let's take out the items. This is the receiver that connects to recording devices. And that's the OLED display, which looks like it's flickering, but that's only due to my camera settings. In the real world, it doesn't flicker. So this is the clip to attach to the hot shoe of your mirrorless camera. This is a 3.5 millimeter out for audio monitoring and this is a 3.5 millimeter to connect to your mirrorless camera. On the bottom, there is a USB-C charging port and that's the wireless charging connector for the charging case. And this silicone cover or rubber cover can be removed. You just have to pull this out. And when you pull this out, you can attach either the lightning adapter or the USB-C adapter to it. So this will allow you to connect this receiver to whichever device you want. One nice thing about this design is you can keep the receiver with the adapter attached back into the box and this will still charge. And speaking of charging, when you put the transmitters and receiver back into the box, charging will start automatically. And when you open the charging case and take them out, they will power on automatically and start powering automatically. So that is very convenient. Now for this um, rubber or silicone cover, I just keep it here. And this is the lightning adapter, which goes here. On the other side of the receiver, there is the power button and M button. So these two buttons can be used to adjust the settings on the receiver. And on the display, you can see information for the battery life of the receiver and the two transmitters, the connection strength, the volume meter, and the recording mode. So right now, I'm using the mono recording mode. If you use the stereo recording mode, one transmitter will record the left channel, the other transmitter will record the right channel. So what I usually do is I'll use a pencil to write down which is the receiver that's recording the left and which one is recording the right channel. So to adjust the settings, uh, you can use well the two buttons. So let's say if I want to adjust the gain for the mics, I can press this button, uh, the power button, and switch between the different well, uh, settings to change. So let's say I want to increase the gain plus one or to plus two. So this can go all the way up to plus nine. And the uh, lowest is minus six. If you use the receiver under shade, the OLED display's contrast is good. However, if you use this receiver under direct sunlight, um, the display can barely be seen. So that's one downside for this mic system. To go into the menu system, you just have to press the M key. So let's do that and see what you can change. So this is where you can change the recording mode between mono, stereo, and safety track. For safety track, one transmitter will record at higher gain, the other one will record at lower gain. This is the TX mute key, so you can choose to enable or disable the mute key. You can choose to enable or disable audio recording to the internal storage on the transmitter. This is the output volume, low cut filter, speaker, enable or disable. I actually don't know what that is. Set the transmitter time, format the storage on the transmitters, backlight should always be enabled so that you can see what's on the display, change language, um, factory reset whether you want to pair the receiver to the transmitter. Now, by default, the receiver and transmitters are already paired. And this is firmware version 1.0. This is the transmitter, and you get two transmitters. The battery life for a single recording session is around 10 hours. So 
Since there are two, you can run down the battery for one transmitter and continue to record using the other. However, the recording uh, limit will be limited by the battery life of the receiver. So the build quality for this transmitter and the receiver is solid. These are well-made products. On this side, there is the power button, noise cancelling button, and the recording button. So noise cancelling button uh, is self-explanatory. Now when you press the recording button here, this red light will turn on to tell you that it's recording audio onto the onboard storage. To retrieve your audio recordings, you just have to connect the transmitter using a USB-C cable from this USB-C port to your computer. And you can see there is this line and mic switch here. When you switch this to line, this color will turn yellow. And I'm not sure if this is used for recording or connecting this to other devices for recording because you can just attach the receiver to your recording device. Um, so yeah. Anyway, um, this should be switched to mic so that um, this can work with the omnidirectional mic or whichever mic you connect to the 3.5mm port here. This is the clip that you can clip to your shirt, your clothing, and there is this magnet so that you can put the transmitter behind your clothing and have this magnet outside so that you can hide the transmitter. And this magnet is incredibly strong. Uh, you need some force to actually pull this off. Or you can clip this to your shorts or pants and attach a lavia mic so that you can hide this uh, somewhere else instead of using uh, the magnet to hide the mic. So right now it's red which means it's recording so let me turn that off and let me press the noise cancelling button. So when you press the noise cancelling button um, it will show on the OLED display whether noise cancelling is enabled or disabled. So right now it says that there is noise cancelling. So green means there is noise cancelling and blue, well, it's the default color. The furry windshield you saw earlier is for the omnidirectional mic and to install it, you just have to put it over the mic, push it in and twist it. So this is quite secure and this does a good job filtering out wind noise. If you want to attach the transmitter outside like this, you will need the furry windshield. And I find that attaching the transmitter by the side is better than attaching it to the front because this transmitter is on the heavier side, relatively speaking compared to some other transmitters that I have tested. So if you attach this to the front here, it can droop forward. So it's best to have the mic actually pointing to your mouth then have it droop forward pointing to the front there will be a slight drop in audio quality when the mic droops forward let's have a look at my iphone setup so i have my phone on this phone holder or phone clamp and this is quite stable and i have the receiver attached to the phone this setup as you can see is quite compact and this is very convenient to bring around so when you have the receiver attached to the phone, you can still see the status light and the display. And what I usually do is attach this phone holder to my tripod and hold it this way to record. Let me show you this directional mic setup that I use quite often. And this is great for interviewing people or covering events because this receiver can record two audio sources at the same time. You can attach one transmitter to yourself, another transmitter to a shotgun mic or directional mic. And this way, when you ask questions, your questions will be recorded through this transmitter and the person being interviewed will be recorded through this directional mic. So this is a really convenient, compact, useful setup with almost no cables the only cable is this 3.5 mm cable that goes around the shotgun mic back to the transmitter and sometimes when i'm vlogging i'm not even using this transmitter because with this particular phone holder that i have here if i need to record myself talking i just have to turn the shotgun mic to face me and if i see someone i want to speak to or record 
just turn this to face the person. And now let's talk about the audio quality you can expect when recording with this mic. So right now I'm recording to my mirrorless camera and there is slight breeze so the photo windshield actually does a pretty good job at filtering out the wind noise. So this is the audio quality you can expect with the Boya mic when recording without noise cancelling and there is some insect noise in the background I'm not sure if you can hear that and right now I'm recording with zero gain and I have just enabled noise cancelling so this is the audio quality you can expect when recording with no gain with noise cancelling enabled now I want you to listen out for any distortion to my voice when there is noise cancelling because there are many wireless mics out there in the market that create some distortion when recording with noise cancelling. I've just switched over to recording using my iPhone with the USB-C adapter. So this is the audio quality you can expect when recording with the iPhone with no noise cancelling. So again, there is a lot of insect noise in the background. I'm not sure if you can hear it. And I find that usually for mobile devices, I need to increase the gain to um, something higher, like plus five in this case. And I have just enabled noise cancelling. So this is the audio quality you can expect when recording to mobile devices with noise cancelling. Right now I'm recording beside a busy road junction without the Lavier mic, without noise cancelling. So as you can see, it's heavy traffic, so it's noisy. Let me enable noise cancelling. So noise cancelling has been enabled and this is the audio quality you can expect with noise cancelling enabled without the lavalier mic. Right now I'm recording at this noisy food center without noise cancelling and this is the audio quality you can expect when recording in a busy environment without noise cancelling and I'm going to switch on noise cancelling right now I have just enabled noise cancelling so this is the audio quality you can expect when recording in a busy environment busy and noisy environment with noise cancelling enabled and this is recording with the labia mic without noise cancelling so this is the audio quality you can expect when recording beside heavy traffic without noise cancelling and now i want to enable noise cancelling so this is with noise cancelling enabled and recording with the labia mic and this is the audio quality you can expect there's a lot of traffic noise and uh, traffic light is sounding off the operating range with this wireless mic is 300 meters with line of sight so the audio recording may be affected if there is no line of sight or if there is a lot of wireless interference so 300 meters is actually a lot generally speaking I don't record that far away from my camera anyway if you're not confident with the wireless connection you can always enable onboard recording and record to the transmitter as a backup so if there is any dropout to the audio you can use the audio recordings from your transmitter so right now i'm actually quite far away from the camera but this is not more than 100 meters so 300 meters is actually quite a good distance the last thing i want to talk about is battery life and the mics have really good battery life up to 10 hours for a single recording session which means you can record in the morning to afternoon go for lunch put the devices back into the charging case and when you're back from lunch, record all the way into the night. So there is enough battery to last you the whole day. All right, to conclude, you can judge the audio quality of this mic based on the clips that I have recorded. And if you guys are interested to buy this mic, you can check out the links that I have for you in the video description below. I hope this review is useful. Thanks for watching. See you guys again. Bye.